Hello, and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, The Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to creating a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Our guest today is Justin Kirsten, who's a solidarity organizer with Portland Jobs with Justin. So welcome to the program, Justin. Thanks for having me, David. Yeah. So talk about uh, Jobs with Justice. What is it? Why, why does it exist? Sure. Uh, Jobs with Justice is uh, a coalition of over 120 community, uh, labor, faith, and student organizations um, that all come together to fight for economic rights, economic justice, um, to fight for racial and gender justice, um, and to, you know, to just to strengthen our community and um, make make our economy a place, like you said, that's that's more fair and equitable and sustainable for everyone. Right. Yeah. And that, that's why I, I think of Jobs with Justice being a good ally with the Alliance for Democracy. In fact, we are a member of the yeah. Jobs with Justice. Right? Yes, yeah. definitely. Right. right. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's good. So, uh, how how do you actually get 120 organizations on the same page? Well, it's not always easy, um, and you, you, I think you, to be fair, you don't always get 120 organizations on the same page. Um, but you have um, you know at least 120 organizations out there who all share similar values um, and and share a similar framework. Um, in terms of the way the the world and the economy, um, and the uh, the way our society should work, um, you know, and, and on any particular issue, some organizations will be more passionate than others. Some will be more involved than others. Um, some will think different tactics are are maybe what will be best to to make sure that something gets done. Um, so everybody's not necessarily always right on the exact same page, um, but in general, we're able to come together um, and work together in a way that that really gets things done um, and win, wins real victories for working people in, in mm -hmm. the Portland area and throughout Oregon. Okay, yeah, and, and so can you tell us some of those organizations, who are they? Sure, well, of course, Alliance for Democracy. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a number of labor unions. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's quite the majority or, or maybe just a slight majority of the organizations are unions. Um, so like the letter carriers, um, both SEIU Local 49 and 503, um, teachers unions, uh, Communications Workers of America, um, the transit workers, longshoremen, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then a lot of community organizations as well. Um, and LASE student groups like Portland, uh, SUSU, Portland State Union, um, Student Union. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've got Ainsworth, the United Church of Christ um, is one of the faith groups that's part of the coalition. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty broad and diverse group, Q Center, other organizations like that. Okay, yeah. uh, okay, good, good. Yeah, so, so uh, tell me a little about yourself. Sure. Um, so I uh, am not uh, originally from Oregon. I'm, a, I'm a, one of the evil California transplants um, that, that we all know and love so well. Um, uh, my, my partner and I came up here uh, in 2009 in the middle of the, e the economic crisis. We both um, lost part or, or all of our jobs um, down in Southern California. Um, and my partner um, was lucky enough to land a job here in Portland um, in, in, a, in a great town like this. And so we, we moved up here. Um, I was a teacher for, for quite a while um, and uh, lost my teaching job during, during that recession down in the LA area. Um, it was 2008, about 5,000 teachers got, got pink slipped, uh -huh. um, basically told that they, there was no guarantee that they were going to have a job next uh -huh. year. Um, so then you know, we, we, we came up here and, and her, her job went well. Um, the, the teaching market here was not really any better than it was down in Southern California and so I sort of hopped around with kind of precarious part-time work being a tutor. I've worked some fast food jobs. I'm just kind of doing, doing what I could to stay busy and uh, try to find better work. Um, and then uh, a few years ago with some other people here in Portland, uh, started the 15 Now campaign mm -hmm. um, here in Portland that ended up going statewide and helping to, to win the minimum wage increase that we have now. Yeah, um, which was a, a fantastic success. Yeah, it, it yeah. was. Um, I mean, it was a little, um, a, a little bit up and down for us, you know. We, we were really hoping to to get 15 for the whole entire state, um, and we got, but we got it for the whole Portland area, and we, we got good raises for the rest of the state as well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't exactly what we were pushing for, but we're still really proud of, of yeah. the accomplishment. And, and, and that's on top of the fact that Oregon had the highest or second highest minimum wage at, uh, the, at time. the time. I believe yeah, right. it was the second highest. I think we've yeah. we've maybe slipped a little bit since then, but we're yeah. still up there towards the top. Right, which is really really great. So yeah. we we need to even that out still with 
the re for the rest of the state, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and Jobs with Justice actually played a, a big role. Um, it was before I was staffed with Jobs with Justice, um, I, and I actually became a board member for for JWJ during the 15 campaign. But mm. um, pretty early on, Jobs with Justice sort of took up the the local aspect of the campaign. Right. 15 now was working more on on the policy stuff um, and trying to push for the for the whole state to win 15. Um, on, on the policy level, um, and then Jobs with Justice was really working locally with with labor unions, with progressive nonprofits and small businesses um, to win 15 for workers with without the policy, right? Just winning it at the at the at the workplace, um, getting raises more directly, um, and in a, in a lot faster timeline than what we ended up getting uh -huh, yeah. um, at the state level as well. Um, and that that campaign was really successful. We we ended up raising the minimum wage to 15 for over 20,000 workers in the Portland area. Like I said, on a timeline faster than than what the state law is allowing. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and really nationally, that whole 15 now movement was uh, quite successful and quite quickly. I've, I, I, I've been around for a long mm -hmm. time. I'm used to things going at yeah, slow spaces. And, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, here in just a matter of a few years. Yeah, I mean, big cities all over the country, right? I mean, San Francisco, Los Angeles, um, the Portland area Se started in Seattle, of course. Um, New York, we, you know, not only New York City, but New York became the first state, whole state, um, before California, I believe, to, to mm -hmm. pass a $15 minimum wage. Right. Um, I think the newest, well, well, kind of an old case, but the, the newest, in a, also in a certain sense, um, St. Louis, Missouri, they, they won 15 back in 2015, um, but it's been wrapped up in courts all of this time. Oh. Uh, and I believe they, they, they finally got the final victory and, and saw it implemented. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's great news. Yeah, great, yeah. Are there many uh, southern states or, or locales that went to the 15? I don't, not to my knowledge. Um, there, there may be some. Um, yeah. But I can't think of any off the top yeah. of my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't even. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well. Development is never even. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. and it never has yeah. been. Yeah. It is, you right. know, the South and the North have been on unequal, unequal footing in that sense since yeah. the beginning. Right. Yeah. So, what uh, what did you teach? I taught uh, history, government, economics. Oh, right. yeah, high school. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I actually got a teaching certificate so I could teach high school and yeah. and history and mm -hmm. and uh, American problems was what I really wanted to teach. Right? Oh, yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Right. Yeah, it, it was would, fun. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been fun for me too, I think. Uh, but when I graduated, it was, you know, everyone was being encouraged to be a teacher, right. which is what I wanted to be, so that was good. But by the time I graduated, there was not a teaching job at the right, nation right, to be yeah. found. So the market got <laughs> so, flooded. Yeah, 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 so, and the economy got bad, so. Right. Uh, so I never got to, got to do that. So, yeah, right. That's a bummer. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, it is, but. Um, um, <laughs> so. Um, Talk about some of the things that Jobs with Justice has been focused on, other than the 15 now. Uh, actually, bef before we go to do mm -hmm. that, uh, you worked for another union before you came with Jobs with Justice. Oh, yes. I worked uh, for about six months. I worked for UFCW Local 555. Uh, the United, United Food, Food and Commercial, right. okay. yeah, United Food and Commercial Workers Union. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, I worked as a community organizer uh, for them. So um, basically, doing outreach to other organizations um, and helping build relationships between other organizations and UFCW. Pr pretty similar to what I do with Jobs with Justice mm -hmm. as a solidarity organizer. Oh, okay, yeah. which was going to be my next question: is, <laughs> is how, how is a community organizer different than a solidarity organizer? Pretty much the same. Yeah, I mean, I think so solidarity organizer is a, a, a term that we use for, for community organizer at Jobs with Justice. Um, I think really just because solidarity is such an important word to us. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really solidarity uh, and solidarity work is kind of the foundation of, of what Jobs with Justice does, aside from all of the specific campaigns, um, really just getting people to show up for other people, right? Um, that's the, the, the basis of our membership, right? We have a, a pledge that people take, the Solidarity Pledge, um, where they're, they're basically committing themselves to come out five times per year, at least five times per year for other people's struggles. So if I'm, I'm a, a white cis man, I might show up for Black Lives Matter or for um, you know, some uh, trans rights event or something like that, or I'm, I'm a homeowner, so I might show up to a renter's rights rally, mm -hmm. um, right? showing up for other people's struggles. Right. So the definition of 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 your alliance of all, all these groups doesn't restrict you just to traditional labor kind of struggles. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, I mean, labor is sort of 
where Jobs with Justice started, and it's still a, a really important component of the work that we do, um, but it's, it's branched out um, quite far beyond that, um, right? I mean, um, and I think in, in a sense you can really, um, not, not to sort of diminish the importance of other things at all, um, but labor is a pretty broad umbrella, right? I mean, Im immigrant rights, right? Im immigrants are workers, right? Mm -hmm. Undocumented people are workers. Um, when we're talking about LGBTQ rights or, or racial justice, right? Um, we're all working people. Um, and so as a, as the intersectionality of, of the struggles that are out there um, and the struggles that are important to taking on the system and changing the system um, to make it more fair and equitable for everyone. Um, really allows you to, to, to broaden the work that, that you're doing while still kind of staying within the framework of, mm -hmm. your, of your sort of labor mission, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's uh, one of the things I particularly like about jobs with justice is they don't have a strict yeah. focus just on traditional labor. Although that's an important component, so it is, um, and I th you know, and I think that um, in a lot of ways and in a lot of places, labor unions are starting to recognize um, that sort of same same idea of intersectionality and the fact that um, if we really want the working class and the labor movement to be successful, um, that we can't just be singularly focused on the members of our particular union, yeah. right? So. Um, you get things like bargaining for the common good, which is actually one of the things that we're, we're working on and, and have as one of our, our priorities for 2017, um, where unions actually look at how they can use the bargaining process for their contract to win win things for the, the community at large, right? For people who more than just their members. So um, you might get a, a nurse's union um, using their, their contract bargaining to win, um, you know, funding for, for um, Racial uh, racial equity healthcare programs in, in communities of color or something like mm -hmm. that, or, or you know workers at the county um, fighting for something that goes just beyond a victory for, for their for their own members, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's really important because um, with the the way that the labor movement is changing and the way that the whole country is changing, um, I think it's really important for for those of us in labor to really look outside of the box. Um, so that we can continue um, to, to, to fight and, and win and, and, you know, win back some of the things that we've lost over mm -hmm. the last few decades. Yeah, yeah this, some, this, <laughs> uh, yeah, this uh, intersectionality is really, really important. And I, I remember for years, uh, I was a union member 40 years ago for a short period of time, mm -hmm. and then I became a, an ASPE member uh, during the last five years while yeah. I was working. I, and in between time, I'll always remember that I thought, um, you know, that unions were so focused just on their own benefits mm -hmm. that it really deterred from uh, uh, getting members of the community to support labor right. um, because it seemed like a, it was a, a, just a, a what's in it for me kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think that that's true, that for, for a long time, certainly not every union out there, but for a lot of unions, it, it was just about kind of servicing their own members. Um, I think in part because um, maybe they, they weren't quite sure what else to do, um, and in part because the labor movement was under attack, and so, um, you know, for the last few decades, it's kind of been almost all, all you could do to, to just keep, keep yourself strong internally, right? Um, now, though, I think more and more unions, thankfully, are, are really recognizing the fact that um, for them to be successful and for the labor movement to beat back the attacks that have been coming at it for the last four or five decades, um, that they really have to look externally, um, not, not only in terms of, of fighting for victories that go beyond their unions, but in terms of really being unions that go out and seek new members, right? Mm -hmm. um, and not just sticking to the, to the industry or to the shops that they've, they've had previously, but really organizing new workers into unions mm -hmm. um, and so that the labor movement can start growing again because it hasn't been growing for a long time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, th I think in Oregon we have uh, among the highest union rates in the nation. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and Washington, I believe, too, or at least I know in this, the Seattle area, uh, they have a number of industries that are, are really union dense compared mm -hmm. to the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and public sector unions have done reasonably well, at, at least as composed to, um, you know, like building trade unions. Yeah, in general, public sector unions um, have done better and are still strong, or stronger than, than private sector unions in general, whether they're, they're trade unions or other kinds of private sector unions. Um, the, um, 
the, the rate of unionization within the public sector is still much higher. Um, and in fact, without, without the public sector unions, things would look a lot, a lot more dismal in terms of union rates and participation mm -hmm. in, in this country. Um, I think the, the private sector unionization rate is single digits at this point. Uh, yeah. um, and it's only because the public sector is so much higher that it, it doesn't look like unions basically don't even exist. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, in, in spite of that, you know, the, the attacks on unions just keeps going. Yeah, and I think that's really a testament to, to the power that labor unions have had in the past and potentially can have again, um, and, and still do to a, a very real extent um, in terms of, of um, fighting for, for regular people, right? I mean, unions are the, the one organization out there that have the, the means, both in terms of like financial capacity um, and just sort of people power um, to really stand up for, for people and, and push for progressive, progressive measures. Um, they, they really have the infrastructure and the resources to do that still, despite the, the, the decades of attacks. Um, and I think that's, that's why it's so important that we, we fight to save the labor movement, even if that means it, it looks a little bit different in the future. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't, I mean, we don't want to lose the, the, the one institution that has, has really gone to bat for working people over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, talk, talk a little bit about one campaign that Jaws with Justice is, is involved with right now. Sure, well, uh, I mean, I think the kind of the most exciting and, and newest and relevant uh, campaign that we're working on is, is called Taking Action Against the Trump Agenda. Um, right, and so I mean, we all saw, um, particularly here in Oregon, the the increase in, in sort of white supremacist hate crimes that took place after the election, um, sort of the increased divisiveness, um, swastikas being spray painted all over the place, you know, people being called racial slurs, um, real real threats, um, right, real real fascist right wing. Uh, white supremacist organizations becoming more bold and, and starting to organize and post their flyers around and, and, and be in schools. Um, and so we, you know, we, like a lot of other people and organizations out there, felt that it was really important to, to do something programmatically um, and organizing-wise about, about what's going on and, and really to fight back. Because um, we didn't for way too long, right? We all, mm -hmm. none, of us, none of us saw the Trump presidency coming and that was a huge mistake because the the signs were were I think all around us when we when we look in retrospect mm -hmm. um, and for years we missed we missed them um, so with the taking action against the Trump agenda um, we're, we're really working with uh, marginalized communities that are, are most vulnerable and most at threat by the policies of the new administration I was in particularly working with uh, with immigrant communities with uh, organizations that are, are run by um, and that work for immigrants and immigrant communities um, to support them um, and make sure that they're they're safe and protected and that they know that the the people of the Portland area stand with them against um, the increased ice raids and against the vitriolic rhetoric that's coming out of the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the really, uh, the biggest piece of that, that campaign is our, what we call our Solidarity Squad, which is a rapid response network. Um, we bring people in and we train them in de-escalation techniques, nonviolent direct action tactics, um, and then we um, provide um, safety teams, de-escalation teams um, for events, rallies, um, lobby days, marches, you know, whatever, um, particularly that are organized um, and run by immigrants uh, and, and people of color um, to, you know, to make sure that those sort of white, you know, white supremacist reactionary forces, if they show up, which they have been showing up um, in a lot of places, um, that th th those people feel safe, you know, so that if ICE shows up, the immigrants feel safe and um, they feel like that there are people there with them that have mm -hmm. their backs. Okay. Uh, I, I know what ICE is, but for our audience that may not know what sure, ICE yeah, is. Sure, yeah, it's uh, Immigration Customs and Enforcement. So they're the ones who um, are, are going around and, and picking up undocumented people. Um, and they're the ones, they, they put them in the tension and they, they sort of facilitate and carry out the deportation process. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And, and I think one of, one of the, nationally, one of the major prisons is in Tacoma. Yeah, that's the, what is it, um, Northwest Detention Center up uh -huh. in Tacoma. Um, and then there's actually one out in the Dalles too. I, uh, we were just out there yesterday um, for, for a rally um, called NORCOR, the North uh, Northern Oregon Regional Correctional Facility. Um, it's actually a juvenile facility that um, that services four, four counties out around the area of, of the Dalles, um, the Eastern Gorge. Oh, in fact, in fact, I was just reading the Oregonian. There was an article about that. Yeah, in the Oregonian this morning. 
Yeah, so um, th I mean, there was a hunger strike up at the at the Tacoma oh, yeah. facility, um, where for for like three weeks, some seven hundred people um, detained immigrant inmates uh, up in Tacoma participated in that hunger strike, and a number of them got transferred down to Norcor in the Dalles in retaliation, um, and so the hunger strike sort of spread to to, oh. to Oregon. Um, and, and then I, in the course of that, it became apparent, um, it, it was d discovered, I, I guess, so to speak, um, that NORCOR out in the Dalles has a contract with the federal government to hold um, ICE detainees, which Oregon is, is supposed to be a sanctuary state, right? Oregon has laws that say that our, our law enforcement agencies and other state agencies are not going to and will not cooperate with ICE in terms of, of holding people that have no other reason for being held other than their citizenship status. Mm -hmm. uh, and this contract that NORCOR has with ICE and the federal government flies directly in the face of that state law. Um, and so a, a big movement is being organized um, by people in the ground, organizations on the ground out in the Dalles, the Rural Organizing Project, uh, and other organizations around the state, um, not only to support the inmates that are, that are there and have been participating in the local hunger strike, um, but to really challenge um, NORCOR and, and this contract as a violation of Oregon sanctuary status. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And uh, how does you know, our audience, how would our audience get involved with supporting yeah. yeah, so you can, I mean, you can get directly involved um, by emailing, I believe it's hunger strike, uh, what's, what is the email address? Well, you know what you can do is you can just email us at Jobs with Justice. Mm -hmm. um, my email address is justin at jwjpdx.org, um, and then we can connect you. Um, there is, you could also go to the Rural Organizing Project's website, rop.org, um, and they've got all the, the direct contact forms and direct email addresses that you can use to get in contact with um, what's being called Gorge Ice Resistance is the uh, name of the campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great, okay, good. And, and so, uh, Jobs with Justice has another uh, campaign, Why Unions Matter, talk about that. Yeah, this, so that's a campaign that was started by one of our committees. We have a number of committees, a health care committee, a faith labor committee, um, and then so this is our Portland Rising Committee, um, and it's a committee that started during the, or I guess just after the, the recession hit, um, sort of in the wake of, of the recession, um, when we were still just really sort of sluggishly so 2008 recovering. 2008 or 2009. Yeah, like that. somewhere right around there. Um, and, and really it was, a, it was a committee that was formed to highlight the the effects that, that the recession was having on working people, which were really devastating, right? People were losing their homes and their retirements and their jobs. Um, so this committee has put together uh, this presentation that's called Why Unions Matter. And they're going into schools, high schools and colleges, um, universities, and doing this presentation. And it's an educational presentation um, that really is, you know, like, it's, like the title, it's, it's about why unions matter and why unions are important. Um, and we, we start, talked a little bit earlier about sort of the uh, attacks that have been happening on unions over the last 40, 50 years um, and the decline of unionization in that time. Um, and so that's what this program is really all about is um, looking at that history um, and looking side by side that history and the history of, of sort of the decline of, of America's middle class and working class um, so that students can really recognize the fact that the um, the declines that we've seen um, in, in for, for working families and in our economy in general are really tied neck and neck with decline in unionization, right? And how um, it really is unions that made America and the middle class strong. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, what they do is they, they go into schools. We have an, a great uh, economist, Marty Hart Landsberg, who used oh, yeah, to teach know, at, at Lewis mm -hmm. and Clark. Mm -hmm. um, so he comes in and he explains all of this history in a, in a really accessible way um, and, and, and makes connections between the economic decline and the decline of unions. Uh, and then we bring in a, a, a union member too, a, a regular working class person who's a member of a union who can really speak to the importance of unions personally for them and how it's, it's really had an impact on their lives and changed their lives for the better. Um, and it's, it's really a great program, and um, it's, it's brought in a, a lot of interest, um, not only to our organization, which is great, um, but, but really about unions in general. Um, and with sort of national right to work still looming out there, right, um, I, I believe uh, the new Republican Congress introduced a national right to work bill in February. Mm -hmm. um, they've yet to really push it, but it's there, just hanging. Um, we know that Trump is interested in, in national right to work legislation. Um, so really educating young people about the importance of unions and what, what unions can do for them and why they should 
um, be a part of the labor movement um, is now more important than it, it ever has been. And yeah. um, so this is really important work that our Portland Rising community yeah. is doing. So I, I'm going to have to invite Marty Hart Lansbury on this show for yeah. him to do a presentation on yeah, why, yeah. why unions love matter. To. Yeah. yeah, okay, that, that's, that's, that's good. That gives me another topic. There you go, right. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, three minutes left. Um, as you know, uh, I've been working on public banking yeah. in Portland mm -hmm. and trying to establish a public bank for the city. Uh, what's Jobs with Justice's uh, position on that? Yeah, we, we fully support the idea of a public bank. Um, we've, we've endorsed the campaign for, mm -hmm. for a public bank here in Portland. Um, and I, th I mean, I think it's important for a, a number of reasons, but to keep it uh, short, um, particularly right now with the decision to divest from or from all all new investment in in corporations, right? That that yeah. was that was a huge thing that happened here in mm -hmm. Portland. Really, really groundbreaking breaking policy. Um, but so, what are we going to do with all of that money, right? If you're not investing it in these big corporations that invest in in pipelines and private prisons, um, then what are you going to do with the money? And putting it in a public bank is the really the, the perfect idea because um, instead of all of the interest that's earned on that money going to the profit of shareholders for these massive corporations and banks, all of that money gets to stay right here in our community and gets to get spent on things that can make our community stronger. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is, it's a really important tool um, to really make Portland's money work for Portlanders instead of working for big corporations. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Uh, well, that, that, that was w what I uh, assumed uh, Jaws with Justice would, would feel about that. So, yeah. Uh, thank yeah, you, I mean, thank it, you for that excellent it, statement. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it'd be great to see that money go to, you know, I mean, like we don't even have oversight for the new minimum wage law, for example. Um, it's all, got all of these different tiers. Um, it's phasing in over so many years. There's no way at all for the city to determine whether employers are living up to the obligation to pay the minimum mm -hmm. wage, right? Um, so there's, just, I mean, there's so many things we could do with that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, th th that's an interesting topic just by itself. Yeah, uh, right. yeah I assumed that there was some enforcement mechanism uh, no. with that. In, I mean, I oh. think, you know, you can probably call the city if you're a worker and say, hey, I'm not getting paid the minimum wage, but um, th you know, there's, there's no body to go out and actually regulate and collect information and make sure that employers are oh, doing the right thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for yeah, being here. Thanks for having me. Okay, great. Good. We've been talking with Justin Kirsten. Uh, Justin is the solidarity organizer with Portland Jobs with Justice, uh, an organization, a coalition of labor organizations and community groups dedicated to protecting the rights of working people and supporting community struggles to build a more just society. More information is available on their website at www.jwjpdx.org. Thank you for watching Populist Dialogues. I hope you have a progressive populist tomorrow. Bye.